What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be showing off my very own Night March list today. One of my favorite decks of all time. Such a fun deck to play. And one of the most notorious archetypes of all time. We've got a couple new inclusions in here, like Custom Catcher, a card that I think is very good in Night March right now. Obviously, we lost Puzzle of Time. But Custom Catcher is cool because not only is it a draw card, filling your hand to three when you play one, but it also allows you to target down a Pokemon on your opponent's bench when you play two. So I think the Custom Catcher, though definitely not a replacement for Puzzle of Time, is very strong in this deck in expanded format. Also got that Marshadow GX in here with Shadow Hunt. Gives you Fighting Typing so that you can copy Night March out of the discard pile and hit Fighting Weak Pokemon for weakness, which is awesome too. So a super fun deck to play. One of my top choices for the Toronto Regional Championships. I think in the right metagame, Night March can be a powerhouse of a deck. It does pretty well against Pikaram decks and fighting decks, of which I've seen a lot of lately. But of course, there are a bunch of counters to Night March. So Night March is always just going to be a meta call. You're hoping that the weather is just right for a Night March play, hoping for lack of Oracorio in people's decks. You're hoping for a lack of Karen in people's lists, a lack of Seismitoad as well. Though a lot of these decks have seen a decrease in play. A lot of these techs have seen a decrease in play with the popularity of decks like Pikaram. With Pikaram being such a strong presence in expanded format, it's kind of hated out a lot of these other decks and techs that we used to see much more of, like Seismitoad in particular. Seismitoad doesn't really do a whole lot to a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX that is swinging in for 150 damage as early as turn one, or even more if it goes second, you can use Choice Bands or of course Electro Powers as well, and then being able to Tag Bolt is pretty devastating. We've got uh, kind of a weird starting hand here, but it's fine. We're just obviously going to Sycamore that, though we don't really love losing two Lampants right off rip there. And then, of course, let's see, we've got Battle Compressor. I could Custom Catcher to draw some more cards. I am trying to just get the rest of my Lampants in the discard pile, and then we will probably also just ditch another Night Marcher like a Joltik because it looks like I am playing against a fighting deck. So I'm not super trying to I'm uh, not super trying to play Joltiks down in this matchup. Now I can draw cards. That is that is something that I could do. I'm gonna put another Pumpkaboo down, but I'm not gonna worry about doing that yet. I'm gonna see what my top deck is and then we may custom catcher to draw some more cards next turn, but we can see I love the Custom Catcher in this deck because it's just not a dead card, right? If you're playing other tech cards in the deck, I mean, maybe if you're playing like Electro Power to power up your Joltik, Electro Power is a dead card unless you're using it to attack that turn. Custom Catcher is an aggressive card, but it's not a dead card if you see it at an inopportune time. My opponent's going to end me. That's fine. I didn't want to bench all those Night Marchers. It's just kind of like a weird thing. If I do have to bench too many Night Marchers, then my damage output is weakened throughout the course of the game. So we do not have our D-Valley anymore, which is a little bit of a bummer. I can Ultra Ball, though, for a Joltik and maybe Guzma this turn, which would probably be fine. Doesn't look like my opponent is playing any sort of sniping action going on. So that is a possibility for me. And I don't necessarily want to put, I guess, a, uh, I don't want to put the GX Pokemon. I want to put Marshadow on the bench. It seems kind of bad. So I think we are just going to go for the Joltik. And then I can use Shaman set up if I want to. We'll Guzma as well just to get, I guess, the Remoraid actually feels the best because I don't want my opponent drawing more cards. And then I suppose we'll set up, though we don't necessarily want to. It's fine. You could play a copy of Parallel City in this deck so that you can't bump your Shamans as the game wears on. Definitely an option as well. Put the Floatstone onto my Octillery, and then we're just going to Night March for knockout on the Remoraid. And now that I have Octillery set up, we're going to be able to draw 
kind of risk-free throughout the course of the game. I don't need to put down any more Shamans. Octillery is kind of a fun card in here. It's not a card that used to see play in Night March. Night March used to just play three, two or three copies of Shaman, maybe a top Belele GX, and that was it. But in the modern era, I'm really liking the Octillery in here, just a 1-1 line. It helps in the mirror a lot as it allows you to keep drawing without putting more liabilities onto the bench. And it also allows you to, what in the world am I facing against? A last resort Fampy deck? Is that is that what I got going on here? Okay, I see you. Um, but yes, I do like the Octillery. It also allows you to draw under Muck Clock throughout the course of the game too. So it's strong for both of those reasons. Let's take a look and see what we get with the Trainer's Mail. Nothing, so that's fine. Then I could rescue Stretcher, the Joltik, to guarantee a knockout. A 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, probably just do that because my opponent does not appear to be playing a Buzzwall GX. So I think that my Joltiks are actually kind of safe. I'll throw another Floatstone down, and then we're just going to N to 5. And sure enough, there is our custom catchers. Love that. I think that we will save our custom catchers for another turn though because I do like taking out this Fampy with all the energy on it so we'll just do that I could probably throw down these guys I guess with two pumpkins on the bench and do I have a rescue stretcher left in deck I don't so we'll probably just ditch one of these and then also the D valleys are good I want those in deck trainers mail ultra balls are good custom catcher good uh, Battle Compressor can go at this point, and that's actually probably about it. I don't really need to discard all too much. And then we will Trainer's Mail, see what else we get. Comp Search, very good. D Valley, very good as well. I feel like the Comp Search gave me whatever I want, so I'll take that. And then we're just going to Abyssal for one and take out this Vampy here with my Joltik. Could let loose my opponent, just not really time for that. We don't need to. Night March will get us there, 120 damage, totally fine. And we are not really maxing out the draw power or the damage output of this deck. I could be churning through my deck much more powerfully. I could be doing much more damage. I could have more aggressively pitched Night Marchers to the discard. I just don't really need to do that. And this match right here, I just need to pace myself. And you can see that against decks that don't have like big HP Pokemon or even against fighting decks, Oracoria would not even be a good strategy against this Night March deck. I only have six Pokemon in the discard pile. In order for a deck to take, I guess, a multiple uh, knockout with Oracoria, not only would I have to have a Joltik down, but I'd have to have nine Pokemon in the discard pile as well. So I am able to kind of police that and be careful throughout the course of the game, especially when attacking with Pumpkaboo into Psychic Week decks like, you know, uh, like Buzzwool GX or Lucario GX. So my opponent's gonna Sledgehammer. That's fine, here's the Don fan. Okay, Rolling Spin. Uh, if this Pokemon has full HP and would be knocked out, it's not knocked out. Okay, so Sturdy is the issue here um, that I have to worry about. It's got a built-in Focus Sash and does a lot of damage. So this does appear to be a counter strategy to uh, the Picaram deck. It appears if that's what we are getting into here. So not really interested in dealing with that. That's annoying because I can't really shut it off in any kind of way. Hexmaniac no longer legal in expanded format. So we're gonna have to figure out another way to do this. I feel like knocking out the active is probably fine. Or knocking out that Diancie is also good. 70 damage is not gonna be enough to knock out pumpkins. So KOing the Diancie would be very strong. I think that that's probably the best thing that I got going for me. So we're gonna bring up that Diancie there into the active. And then uh, I'll probably Abyssal first. I don't necessarily want to discard any of these guys. And then I'm thinking that the Marshadow, I guess I could Let Loose. Let Loose could be good here uh, just to limit my opponent's hand. So 
yeah, we'll go with that. And then I do want to keep the D value also because it is going to allow my pumpkins to continue attacking throughout the course of the game. So I do need to kind of keep that. We'll go here and then we're just going to, let's see, we're going to let loose. Limit my opponent's hand to four cards. That's cool. I haven't played a supporter yet either. So I don't really need to play a supporter this turn because of everything else that I'm doing. I mean, I've already counter -catchered. I've already used Let Loose. I mean, I've done a bunch of supporter-like effects this turn without actually playing any. Sure enough, here's a Verse Seeker. I do have to be careful on my resources. I've got Faba, which could be fine uh, if I wanted to remove something with Faba. Or I've got teammates, or I've got Guzma. I think I'll just save those for next turn and take this knockout here. I believe I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, 160 damage. That's fine. Night March four KO on the Diancie, and that's a lot of like kind of a big, not so secret, I guess, against playing these fighting decks. So a lot of times you just want to take out the Diancie. Their power level decreases exponentially when you take out the Diancy from the picture. Like I said, without a strong energy, this rolling spin is not even going to be knocking out my Pumpkaboo. So that is a major concern. It looks like they just have to attach strong energy and pass, which is kind of horrible. And I'm glad that I saved this because I could just faba that strong energy and that'll go to the Lost Zone. Yep. And then I can just continue using Night March. And even though I'm not going to be taking a KO, it's fine because we know that that Don Fan is not going to be attacking next turn for a KO. If they attach a double colorless energy, oh, this is the strategy that they plan on using is last chance potion. Oh, I did not see that coming. Not going to lie. Okay, we've got three prizes remaining. I think at this point, I need to not play into this sturdy last chance potion shenanigans. That needs to be something that we don't do. So what I'm going to do instead is I think that I am going to sky return this fool. That would be the, uh, that would be the sauce. So let's just, uh, I guess we could Guzma sky return. I do need to, that's my last verse seeker though. So I'm not really trying to play it, if that makes sense. Let's just go here and then I can gladly just sky return this thing into my Mars Shadow, which also resists fighting and has 70 hit points. And with that float stone in my hand, I am easily going to be able to pivot to a different Night Marcher to take this knockout. But very cool strategy on my opponent's part, sturdy and oh, they are knocking it out, I guess, this turn. And the fact that Rolling Spin does more damage is a little bit concerning. It's fine. I've got a fresh pumpkin right here who's going to take a knockout. This is going to be tough. I will have to definitely utilize all of the Sky Return power here to take these knockouts throughout the course of the game. I want to save my final Versus Seeker for the game-winning Guzma so that I only need to do this kind of shenanigans twice where I sky return first, right? Just uh, definitely, definitely tough. We have to see. This buzzwell is probably going to swing around. If it does swing around for knockout, then I can Guzma the following turn for knockout, uh, or I guess knockout and then Guzma for knockout, which would be the goal here. And with a Pokemon like Rockruff on the bench, I know that I'm going to be able to... They didn't have it! Ah, yes. Okay, so we're in the clear now. We're going to be able to win this one. I've got the D-Valley right there. That's fine. I do have to be a little bit careful, though. I guess if my D-Valley gets countered again, I could be in some trouble. So let's take a look at my deck real quick and just see what is left in there, just in case. We have Shaman. We have Mime. We have one Custom Catcher. Yes, and one DCE. I do not have any more um, Night Marchers in there. So that is a little bit tough. I should have one Joltik prized, it appears. So ripping the Joltik would be good as well. And then we're just going to Night March here for Knockout. I've got Guzma in my hand for game. I should say game because if my stadium gets countered, then I don't. But now I do because I've got the Joltik. So we can do it. Very cool strategy here. Can't believe sturdy. Last chance potion, all of that 
Very cool. It feels like those two cards were made for each other here. And my opponent deciding to stream their knockouts with the experience share. Very cool strategy indeed. Unfortunately, not going to be able to cut it against my Night March deck. Very cool. And you guys got to see those custom catchers come into play there. We're going to roll another one and see if we can't, I don't know, load up against a Picaram deck or something like that. Or maybe even Zorark would be fun to play against. All right, let's see what we got here. Playing against a Dark Grass Psychic deck should be interesting. Possibly a Zorark deck, if I had to guess. Isaiah 68. Hello, hello, Isaiah. And yeah, so I think that the deck, it works pretty well. Honestly, for what I want it to do, it is always a little bit sketchy. Playing Night March, though, you've just got such low HP Pokemon that can be abused in numerous ways. I mean, we do have to worry about the Giratina EX, Chaos Wheel, also Oracorio, as I've mentioned. Or, of course, just Karen. There are just a lot of kind of glaring weaknesses to the deck overall. But when it works, it works, and it is a lot of fun to play. Definitely something that is in my comfort zone. I feel like the deck is, you know, kind of firmly placed in my wheelhouse of decks that I could just pivot to at any moment and play totally fine. Looks like this is probably a Zorark muck deck here, and I do have kind of a suboptimal starting hand clogged up with a bunch of weirdo stuff, but sure enough, so does my opponent, because we're getting end. So that is great. They'll probably just grab his Rua if I had to guess, and then end this hand away. And that is what we are seeing here. They got the nice paralyzing gaze. Zeru is there. Very cool. And we'll see a new hand of six. Mime is not who we want in this active position. Neither is the special charge with this hand. We always want to see that card later, not now. So we will discard some stuff. And I'm thinking that we're probably just going to get a couple of lamps and then like an N because I don't actually want this hand. And sure enough, what is that? Both my both my Juniper surprised? Alrighty then, uh, both Junipers, why are you not in deck? So that is, uh, that's fantastic. All right, that's cool. So didn't have a choice anyway. It was always going to be, uh, <laughs> it was always going to be it. Let's see what we got here. Probably we'll put down the pumpkin and the DCE while I've got the cards here, just so I don't get benched or anything odd. And then we're just going to end again and hope that we draw into some juice here off the end. But a lot of times the end, ooh, okay. I was gonna say a lot of times the ends always end up being a disappointment, but this is actually exactly what we wanna see here. And we will gladly ultra ball away probably the Guzma and the Lampent. And then I'll just put down, I think, another, we only have one Shaman. I could put down another copy of Pumpkaboo, though I don't want to do that either. I feel like hitting my setup now is important because my opponent is probably going to try to muck lock me. So we're going to try and set up as much as possible while we do have access to our abilities. Get as many battle compressors played as we can, so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a weirdo junk hand that we got here. Let's uh, Ultra Ball away. Probably, to be honest, don't like super need that Floatstone or that D Valley, to be honest. Like, I mean, I'm probably just gonna attack with Pumpkaboo this one time and then never again. So we will probably also let loose here two, four cards and attach probably this choice band. That I don't wanna waste that choice band. The choice bands are so good in the deck, but it's fine. We'll attach the choice band there. And then I do have one D Valley left in case I need it. So let's just get going here, let loose two, four, and sure enough, that'll get us what we need. We've got Battle Compressor and Trainer's Mail, very good. We can pitch a bunch more Night Marchers to the discard pile and a Lampant, that'd be excellent. I don't really want this other um, Pumpkaboo in my hand, but that's fine. And then I think I don't actually have any more cards left in deck or any more Shamans or anything like that. I prize the Shaman, so we're just gonna end up going in here and then save the Trainer's Mail for next turn. We'll Night March the Grimer. Let loose to four, strong turn for me, and I do know that I prize two Junipers, so there's like a decent shot that I get a Juniper here, and it's a Custom Catcher. 
it's fine as well. We can hope that my opponent doesn't get a Zorark here, but there he is, so that's fine. The Pumpkaboo is gonna be going down. We want to see some draw action here for sure. My opponent has got the turn two Zorak and Muck and Colrus for six. That was a very strong draw off of the Let Loose, exactly what they wanna see. If I can just get my hands honestly on a double colorless energy, I don't really feel bad about just sky returning this Zorark this turn. We do have the, uh, the Octillery in this deck, which does allow us to refill our hand to five, even under the Muck Lock, which can be very oppressive, especially going uh, first, right? I mean, a turn two Muck going first is really tough to deal with. So we're gonna try our best here and see what we can make of it. We do have the Mr. Mine with the Floatstone, so that's good, we'll promote that. And we've got one Trainer's Mail and potentially one Custom Catcher to draw out of this mess. Though both Sycamores, both Junipers, both of them prized, that is not actually going to be great for me throughout the course of this game. We have a special charge. I think I trainer's mail first to see if I hit anything. And we do have a versus seeker. So that will allow me to at least end here, which is better than nothing. Then I will special charge, throw the DCE back into the deck. And at this point, honestly, we are probably just looking to sky return. So I'll bench that. And then I'm just going to end myself to five because I don't have any energy or anything like that. We wanna get the Shaman off the board. I actually don't even mind just like sacking. Um, that's cool. This is actually a pretty good hand here though. Like I really wish that I didn't have to just continuously, <laughs> I really wish that I didn't have to continuously. Um, let's see, what do, we, what do we got going on here? How many Night Marchers down? We have six, seven. And if I were to do eight, nine, Right, that Marsh Shadow is like not gonna be working this game. Eight, nine, we have nine, so a choice ban would do it if I could find a choice ban, actually. So I do have an out to find the choice ban off that trainer's mail if I discard these three, which is probably fine. I think I actually wanna discard the teammates instead so that I could teammates for something next turn uh, with this verse seeker if I miss it. So let's go for it. We've got Ultra Ball and Custom Catcher. I think the custom catchers are going to be better here so I can teammates for like a custom catcher piece next turn. And then we're just gonna sky return this dude while he's here. So definitely feeling that. Let's sky return the Shaman and we're just gonna promote probably the Mime. He's got free retreat. And if my opponent Guzma's around it, it's totally fine. But we kind of want to force them to Ace Arola. We do have plenty of rescue stretchers left in the deck, so I don't really mind going down this deep into my Night Marcher pool. I think that that's totally fine with the rescue stretchers that I have less left. And you can see how just like Custom Catcher and teammates can just keep me doing exactly what I need to do throughout the rest of the game here. Even if they knock out the Joltik, like that's 10 Pokemon in the discard pile, which means that I could do 230 with my Pumpkaboo, which is enough to knock out a clean Zorark here. So I do want to desperately find that Remoraid though, because if I can find the Remoraid, then I'm like really going to be in a great spot. I would be super impressed if they had Sky Return to this Joltik, but I don't think that they have that. They did double attach this uh, Blend Energy over there, so that's not gonna be an option for them. And we do still have our free retreating mime, so that is fantastic. And I have double counter catcher as well. I am gonna take this opportunity to knock out the Zorark though and teammates, so let's do that. One to teammates and then hopefully that D-Valley is still in the deck. If not, I'm gonna have to go with plan B. Uh, hopefully the D-Valley, that's what we want. The D-Valley is in deck so we can attack with the Pump Kaboo this turn. And then I also just want the Rummer Raid. I think that that's going to give me the most stability here going forward, so let's just do that. And I will knock out this Zorark here while setting up my own Octillery, so that's great. And then we have the DCE already since we Sky Return last turn, and let's just retreat into this and go from there. I don't need to Custom Catcher up anybody else. We're just gonna Night March for knockout. Plenty of damage here, 210. We could have done it even if it was a clean Zorark. So, Sure enough, there is another pumpkin, but we don't actually have a third D-Valley. 
or a fourth D Valley if this D Valley gets bumped again. Though they don't actually have a ton of draw power here. I think that they're kind of tapping out. They have like a bunch of teched out stuff in this list. It looks like they plan on using Horror House potentially at some point, which is interesting as well with those, what, the unit energies, blend energies that they have, right? And also potentially Glycopod to knock out Magikarp and Waylord GXs, but it looks like they're just going to be taking a knockout on my pumpkin, which means that I can use Octillery to draw cards this turn, which is very good for me. And if I could just find a Versus Seeker, I'm going to be able to knock out that Muck, which is really what I want to do here with my Custom Catchers. I think that's like the ideal play. Faba also gets me, you know, pretty cool play. I mean, I can Faba that Floatstone bring up the Muck, which is a thing for sure. So let's see here. We're going to do that. We're going to bench probably all these Pokemon here, which is like, Faba can't remove stadiums, right? A tool or special energy. Okay. So I think we have to just custom catcher the Muck here. I think that that's like probably our play. Then we have to do this. Then we have to just bench these things, even though we don't necessarily want to. And then are going to Abyssal Hand for four cards, see if we can't find a teammate. That will do it. I think the comp search will get me the teammates piece that we need so I can just get rid of Battle Compressor and Faba here. And we could get Versus Seeker to just go get me a teammates. Uh, and then teammates will get me probably double rescue stretcher is all I really need for the rest of the game. And then we should be able to win. Um, yeah, or just get the, the Marshadow as well because Marshadow will be able to attack this next turn into that Zorark for game, which would be super red. So we're gonna get the rescue stretcher. We're also going to get, I think the other piece will be Marshadow. And then we are just gonna go in next turn try and win yeah so if we bench the Marshadow now uh, should be fine just like on my board and then all I need is just to find double colorless to win the game we're gonna get probably Joltik though here just to get that attack off onto the Alolan Muck here we go DCE Marshadow on bench and then oh look at that beautiful beautiful setup here under the Alolan Muck lock 200 damage there and this better be one of my sycamores. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have game left in deck. We just can abyssal into it. We can sycamore into it. Bunch of different ways we can do this. Though I am down all four verse seeker and my Guzma, I do have custom catchers left in deck as an option too. Looks like my opponent is playing a very teched out deck here. Prevent all damage on this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's basic Pokemon. Wow. If they had literally just gotten this card into play, I would not have been able to win the game. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so Pyroar. Is Pyroar some secret sauce that I just don't know about right now? I guess without Hex Maniac, Pyroar is that dude, right? But we just have game here. I can draw into the remainder of my deck with Abyssal Hand and Professor Sycamore and just win the game with this Marshadow GX. You can see, even if I wanted to, I was going to be able to um, custom catcher up the Zorark this turn, you know, which is extremely strong. I didn't need to do that though, because we have just got that DCE sitting in our deck. So we could just Sycamore for it, which we'll gladly do, and then take the final knockout of the game with our Marshadow, copying Joltik out the discard pile for Night March and game. GG's there, man. We did what, like 440 damage? And we did it all with only three DCE and no Professor Sycamore because I prized like both of them. So we only used that one Sycamore there at the end. Not bad, all in all. I think this list is really fun. We saw the Octillery get to put in work there. We saw the Custom Catchers get to put in work there. Uh, I think that everything in the list has a reason for it. I've been working on it for a while. So definitely a solid list. And if you're a Night March fan, 
feel free to check it out. I'll drop the list in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. Check me out on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash Tricky Jim, where I stream every single weekday. Big shout out to everybody who supports me on Twitch. Big shout out to everybody who supports me on Patreon as well. Y'all are incredible. Also, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com in the description below as well for all your TCG needs. Y'all take it easy. Have a great day. Peace.